I hope you're all well. So this is a follow-up of our print and cut for beginners uh, video that we did the other day, or actually it's the same day for me, but it'll probably be the same day for you or the day after. So ignore that. Uh, but this is all about pattern fill. Pattern fill is one of my favorite things about design space. I love my contour tool, as we all know, but pattern full is something I absolutely love. So there are lots of pattern fills available in design space. So we'll look at those and we'll also look at how you bring them in as well. First thing we're going to do is let's do text and then we'll do an image afterwards. Let's choose, have we got a Halloween font in here? I'm sure we have. So this is CF Halloween. I'm just going to unlock it and just kind of make it bigger, like so. In our last video, we looked at how we can take text and we can change it to different colors and then we can change it to a print and cut. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you use pattern fill. And you can use pattern fill in both images and on letters do it as a whole first so if I come up to fill it's currently set to cut and I change the fill from no fill to print it will change it to print and cut and then if we select on the color block you'll see it says print type and it's currently set to color if I click the drop down menu I can then choose pattern so there are lots and lots of patterns in here from Design Space and there's also a lot in here that I've brought in myself. So we're going to do a Design Space pattern first. And I want a Halloween-y one, so let's go to Filter. And I can filter the colours, um, but they could be in lots of different colours, so actually we'll just scroll through and see if there's any that take our fancy and jump out at us. So let's select this spider web one here. And all you need to do is click on it and it will then turn our letters into that pattern. And you can change the pattern as well. So if we go to edit pattern, we can change the scale. So let's just tip the scale this way a bit and our spider webs become bigger. And equally, if we go the other way, they become really small until you can't really see their spider's webs. So we want them a little bit bigger. We can also change the horizontalness of them. So I can just change them slightly. And of course I can type in, so if I do 50 for example, and I can change the vertical as well. So let's do 25 on those. And we can rotate them if we want to. And we can also flip as well. So this will print as you see it, but it will only cut out each of those shapes. And of course, as we discussed in the last video, because this is writing and there's no background, it will cut out each of these words individually unless we put it onto a circle or a square or whatever it may be as a sticker, for example. So let's say I want a couple of different pattern fills. So we're going to take away the print. So we're just going to select no fill and that will make it solid again. We're going to ungroup the letters. So they are now individual and I could have a mixture. So say for example, I wanted the H to be a color. I could go to print, select the color type and grab a purple. And then the P, I could change that to a print, get my colors. I could go to advanced. Let's choose a slightly different kind of purple like that one. And then we've got colors in there as well. So let's say I want my A to be a fill. If we go to print, click on the color block, change the print type from color to pattern. 
I can then come in and select the pattern that I want to use. And again, if I want to edit the pattern, I can. So I can completely change the way that it looks. For my P, again, change it to a print. And let's change to a pattern. Let's select this one here. And we can edit the pattern if we want to. So let's say I want the whole word to be one pattern. The easiest way to do it is to select it and just weld it together. Now welding, as we know, is like super glue. So I always say if you're going to weld, save first and then weld. Because if you weld, save and then close design space down, when you come back in, you can't unweld. That's now one complete word. So I can change it to a print and then change the print type to a pattern. And this time when I choose a pattern, it will change all of those letters to that pattern. Now, if we want it to print like this, we are going to have to highlight it and attach it together. And because we're attaching it when it's a print, it won't all change to the same color like it will if it was set to cut. If I do it like this, we'll obviously cut out each of these individual letters. If I was to make this smaller, for example, and have it on a shape, I don't know, let's go to images and let's choose, ooh, cauldron. Make that a little bit bigger. Of course, with print and cut, we are restricted to 6.75 by 9.25. I can arrange and center front, bring that in. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Highlight both and I can flatten. And what that will do is it will cut out the shape, but it will print this as you see it. So anything that's attached to that cauldron will cut out as an outline, but these individual bubbles, they will cut out individually. So bear that in mind. So if we flatten, we can then see how it's going to cut. So it will cut everything you see in black as one, apart from the individual bubbles, but it will print our happy Halloween. There are print ones already there. So if we go to art type, we can choose print then cut. But as I explained in the last video, if you choose a print then cut image, you can't change the colors on it. So if you want to play around with colors and layers, you're better off choosing a cut image. So very simply, we'll look at the cat first of all. So it's set as a print and cut. So if we come over to our fill, it's set to print. If we click on the picture, it will say print type and we can choose original artwork or pattern. But as I say, it will infill the whole shape. And then you don't need to do anything to that. You simply go to print and then cut and this is what it will look like and it will cut that outline out. So this is a cut and it's four layers. So if I click on that base layer and I change it from a fill to a print, click on the color and go to pattern. Let's select that pattern there. So if we then click on this one, change it from no fill to print and color to pattern. Again, we can change the pattern. So let's go for this one. Very psychedelic. Click on this one. No fill to print. Select from color to pattern. Let's choose that one there. Very nice. And we can of course edit pattern if we want to. So we can make it look completely different. Perfect. 
Now if I simply attach these, what will happen is it will print it as you see it, but when we come to cut, it will try and cut all of those individual layers and we don't want that. So we're just going to undo or just detach is probably the quickest way to do it. And all you're going to do is highlight all of them and flatten. So as I explained in our beginners video, when you flatten to a background, being one of these circles, it will print as you see it, but it will only cut that background shape. There are so many different papers and patterns and backgrounds that you can get, Creative Fabrica, Design Bundles, there's lots of other sites as well. There are so many different ones. We're on Creative Fabrica and all I've put in is Halloween. It is endless. Okay, let's just go with this one because there's so many to choose from, I just can't decide. So I'm going to download. I always like to show in folder. I select all of them at once and I move them to my pictures so they're easy for me to find and to see. If we come back into Design Space and go to Upload, instead of Upload Image, we're going to Upload Pattern. So select that, browse, you can browse in your pictures, I always move mine to my pictures because they're easy for me to find and you can then select one of the patterns, so let's go for this one and open. You can give it a name which at the moment I think is a little bit pointless because you can't search by name but you do need for it to have a name. And then you can also do themes and styles as well, but again, they're not currently available as a filter. So the easiest way to do it is color. So let's pick purple and save. So you can bring a pattern in as a JPEG, a GIF, a PNG or a, or a BMP. When we upload an image, it comes here. When we upload a pattern, it's not there. So let's go back to our canvas. We've got our pumpkin, so if we change the fill to a print and then click on the colour and select pattern, we've got our uploaded patterns there, but I've got lots and lots in there. So if I go to filter and I filter to purple, there is my pattern waiting for me. So if I click on it, my pumpkin then takes on that pattern and of course I can edit the pattern as well so it doesn't matter whether it's a design space one or an uploaded one, you can edit them. Now with the design space ones there are free ones, there are access ones and there are also paid patterns as well so very similar to fonts and images. Now with this one it will cut out the outline of the pumpkin but it will also cut out the eyes and the mouth. I absolutely love Pattern Fill, it gives you so many options. Okay, so I want to do a complete layered image with lots of different Pattern Fills, I may do some colours as well. And I like to do it a layer at a time, so I'm going to select the base layer and it's all the same, so I'm going to change it to a print, change from colour to pattern and then select the pattern I want. If I select the hat, change it to a print, and then pattern. We can make that a little bit bigger maybe. And if I want to keep colour on there, I can as well. It's completely up to you. Once I'm happy, I simply highlight and flatten and the reason I flatten and not attach again if I attach it will cut out all the individual layers so if I flatten it it will change it straight all to a print but it will cut out the outline and print out the inner. We can then go to make it once we're happy. There's a print and cut and we've also got our scan line showing us exactly where they are. We can go to continue 
I'm selecting my maker but you can use any of the explore machines the only machine you can't use with print and cut is joy I'm going to send to printer make sure you choose the correct printer I'm using my Canon which is an inkjet I'm using an inkjet sticker paper it's just a generic sticker paper I've got you can find laser printables but you will need to search for them if you've got a laser printer I'm choosing to have the bleed on the bleed has recently changed so it used to be really fuzzy and obvious and really in your face and not very pleasant it acts as a buffer so if print and cut is slightly off with the cut the buffer is obviously there as a buffer they've changed it so now it's actually just a bolder version of your image or your text it actually you don't notice it's there it looks like part of your picture so I actually used to always have the bleed off I now have the bleed on because it doesn't bother me I always select use system dialogue and then print the reason I choose to have the system dialog on is that if I don't change my printer settings if I'm using a printable material it always gets jammed so I make sure I've got system dialog on and I'm connected to the correct printer go to preferences and I change my media type from plain paper to photo paper plus glossy 2 that always works for me and I also changed the print quality from standard to high and then I select OK and then I can print always make sure that you're putting your printable material in the correct way of your printer your printer will have a certain way it likes paper fed so make sure you know how that is so that's my little fella all printed out now it is inkjet so you want to leave it to dry for sort of five to ten minutes just to stop it from smudging i always use a green mat and you always want to make sure you place it in the direction it's showing in design space i also go in with my brayer to secure it to the mat rather than a scraper just to make sure I'm not scraping any ink away for my cut setting I'm going to browse all materials and I'm going to search for sticker and we've got sticker paper which is a Cricut one but I'm not using the Cricut sticker paper stick it sticker paper as I said in the previous video it's going to scan first so it'll scan these registration marks and then it will start cutting sometimes it will say it can't scan there's normally a couple of reasons for that first of all your area is too dark so you may need some more light second there's too much light uh, so you need it a little bit darker and third is that your printer ink perhaps isn't as full as it should be and so the scan lines aren't as bold as they need to be you'll see once we load it and we press our C a little light comes on under here that's our scanner and then once it's scanned it will start cutting out for us <laughs> 